Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Brothers, sisters, um, it's just the, uh, there's only one more part to the, uh, section of section, to the part of section three, um, which is energy fields. The only section that's left in there is the chakra system. It's not too horribly long, but, um, I was hoping just to go ahead and just get this out so that we can get through this. I just want to get to the good stuff. There's some really good stuff back here in the back of the book, and I really want to share it with you guys. Some really, really enlightening stuff about who you are and how you exist on multiple dimensions and how you use those higher dimensional selves to get what you need here and to fulfill all the tasks that you have here that you set out for yourself before you came. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. It's the chakra system. How does energy in these fields actually resonate? If the three fields are in different frequency bands and spinning at different rates, uh, I totally read that wrong, I'm sorry. How does energy in these fields actually resonate? If, three field, if the three fields are in different frequency bands and spinning at different rates, that's where the chakras come in. They are frequency transformers for energy and little storehouses in their own right. There are many accounts of the chakras, but few actually tell you what they do. Suppose something big is happening in one field, say a massive influx of sexual energy because you're about to make love. The second chakra in this case is especially tuned to this frequency and translates the energy in the field that is excited be it spiritual, mental, or emotional, into frequencies that turn the other fields on. As a result, all three fields start buzzing with love-making energy. Or if your survival was threatened, the first chakra would pick up the thought of danger from the mental field or the feeling of anger in the emotional field of someone approaching you. It would broadcast danger through the other fields. And if you are in alignment, you would respond very quickly if the energy in your fields is not in alignment you become confused your mental body thinks i'll take him out i'll take him out of it your emotional body feels i remember this from when i was little and your physical body says run for it we are grateful to ariel for bringing a technique onto the planet called the unified chakra i just want to stop right there for a second i've looked into the unified chakra i want to find a book on it by ariel but uh so far i'm still looking um but you can go on youtube and uh they have some great meditation exercises for unifying your chakras um i highly recommend this i did this last night and i woke up feeling great i slept like a baby and woke up feeling just completely energized, ready to rock and roll after only four hours of sleep. So I highly recommend it. In this process, you literally expand your heart chakra to encompass all the others. As we'll see in part two, the unified chakra and aligned energy fields are very important, not just for survival, but more importantly, as vital tools for ascension. Thus, at one level, you are made up of three fields, each consisting of energy of countless different frequencies. Each field carries, a, carries or supports energy of particular frequencies in standing waves and acts as both a transmitter and a receiver antenna. The blend of frequencies and relative amplitudes is uniquely yours and to a large extent defines you, defines who you are as a body and a personality. This blend or energy signature is yours in the same way that the timbre of a particular instrument distinguishes it from all others. Even of the same type, the energy of the three bodies interacts in indescribably complex ways. Your, thought affect, your thoughts affect your physical and emotional fields, and your, emotional, your emotions affect your thoughts and physical body. We saw earlier that your set of fields resonates with two other types of field, the fields of others, the field of other people around you and the planet wide fields of the consensus reality. Each person you meet is running his or own her, his or her own energy show. 
Suppose one day you're out walking about town, feeling good, positive, confident, free of fear, and in love with the world. You meet an old friend who's just been fired and is worried and or angry. What's going to happen when your fields merge on a street corner? It's a really good question. That's where self-control comes in. Um, your friend's emotional energy is transmitting fear and his mental body is transmitting negative thought forms and your fields are picking them up. Any fear frequency energy in you starts to hum and a standing wave may begin to build. You are transmitting into your friend's field also and maybe some higher frequency energy begins to resonate in him or her. The actual outcome would have been unpredictable before now. But you know about this stuff now. You are not responsible for what happens in your friend's fields, even though you know what's going on. You are, however, totally responsible for what's happening in your own fields. Meeting a miserable friend and becoming miserable through resonance is not mastery. And this is in parentheses right here. Unless, of course, you really want a good cry to dump some grief from your cells, in parentheses. You are responsible if you let resonance creep up on you. Part 2 contains some tricks for detecting standing waves in others and for shielding yourself from their effects. I did read the exercises. The exercises are pretty awesome. I think I'll do separate videos just for the exercises to, uh, just so you don't have a bunch of other jibber jabber in between it and you can just go ahead and go right through the exercise and do that on your own and learn it so that you can do it while you're out and about in your day. These are excellent, excellent exercises for recentering yourself and getting your chakras realigned, um, getting unity with the source. Those are very, very important things in life. Um, I've never had such peace until I, I started getting into chakras and how unity works with the source and who we are. There's still a lot I don't know. I'm learning just along with you guys. There's some really cool stuff out there, though. And I'm sure, you know, if you guys have any ideas and have any techniques that you want to share, please leave them in the comments. I'd love to know. I love trying new things. I'm always open-minded about stuff. This kind of situation is easy to spot and deal with compared with the second type of field, the planetary consensus reality. This is much more difficult because you're fully immersed in it. Like a fish in water, you only notice air when it's full of fog or pollution. The field containing consensus reality energy is far less evident than that, especially when you've lived in it all your life. It forms a huge sphere around and within the planet, much like air, although, su although much less beneficial. Every time you inhale or exhale, you exchange some of the air you share with everyone else on this planet. Each time you think a thought or feel an emotion, you also exchange energy with the consensus reality. And you don't have to do a thing. Just sitting quietly at home, you are immersed in the stuff. Just like the radio waves from all the radio stations are flooding your body at this moment, and I warn you, the 1990s are going to be rough. Yes, they were. They were crazy. Um, this book was written in 1988. As people plunge into the last remaining years to dump the garbage from their fields and clear karma with others and themselves. So the last thing you want to do is tune into the consensus channel. It only shows horror movies. Very true. Dropping the habit of watching television news and being very selective about newspapers is an excellent idea. When you can't tell the difference between the news and a crime drama, it's time to switch it off. And the news will get more rather than less bizarre as people demand to know that some other poor guy out there has got it worse than they have. That is completely true. We all watch horror movies and the news is especially addicting when you think, you know, it's like driving by a flipping accident. The traffic gets more backed up from people rubbernecking looking at the accident going, oh man, that poor guy or that poor lady, or, you know, oh, I hope nobody died. Their interest in it causes more of a bottleneck in the traffic than the actual accident did. It's crazy. People always have this desire to know that someone else out there has it worse than they do. And thank God it didn't happen to me today. 
that could have been me. You know, there's always that consensus reality. I totally can visualize this. This is spot on. He's, he's actually spot on about this. We just have this, uh, this urge, this addiction inside us that wants to know that somebody else out there has it worse. That, oh, okay, at least I'm not so bad off. Somebody out there is always poorer than I am. Somebody out there is always richer than I am. Someone out there always better looking or whatever. Whatever the thing is, there, there's always you want to know that you're, you're doing better than someone else and someone else has it worse. It's messed up. I, I can fully look back and see where I've done it. And it's, it's been a lifelong thing, just unconsciously just tuning into this crap. Let's move on. I'm sorry, guys. This is my own little tangent. Sorry about that. Now, I'm not suggesting that you become callous about other people starring in the karmic horror movies that they call their lives. But if they believe that they are victims of a random universe and that is only a matter of, that it's only a matter of time before a airplane crashes through their roof or a runaway bus comes through their wall, they are creating a reality that you don't want to share. Very soon you will find that you just don't resonate with people like that and that you're gravitating to the company of other masters. If you accept that the universe is benign and that your spirit self is there to assist in the ascension process, you won't be swamped by the I may be next energy of the consensus reality. Again, part two contains a few tricks for unplugging from the sticky consensus consensus reality and plugging into the glorious reality that spirit is manifesting on your planet. Planet Earth is unique in its density and the personality's severed perception of spirit. Nowhere on any planet has desensification and separation from spirit gone as deeply as it has on Earth. You collectively pulled off a brave experiment to see just how far from the source you could go. The good news is that the experiment has a brilliant, is a brilliant success and is now coming to an end. It's time to dismantle the apparatus and go home. So let's take a look at how all this started. How did it all happen? That is the end of uh, section three. The next section is the origin of species, section four. Um, I just want to point out that that very last section started a thought right there about our spirit selves, our higher selves, and how we decided to come here to try out how just how far we could move from source and separate ourselves from the source without actually separating. See, we are a part of the source. That giant fire, we took a we took a, a stick with fire on top, you know, we took a torch. That's a better word for it. And we said, all right, we're gonna we're gonna go all the way over here. We're gonna project ourselves down to the lowest degree of frequency. Incarnate our bodies here and see and give ourselves amnesia and see just how far we can take it away from source without losing control. Everybody here is here experimenting, doing their own thing. We are all ascended masters. We are all one with the source. But we're all here for a different reason. We're all here to learn different lessons. We've learned different lessons in the past and we will probably learn different lessons in the future granted if the end of the ages the end of the eons doesn't come first so this just might be everybody's last incarnation on this earth but there are still children being born today so that means that there are still spirits incarnating on this earth now um so i just want to pull out this you collectively pulled off a brave experiment to see just how far from the source you could go. It, the rest of this book's gonna get really interesting. Um, I'll go ahead and upload this, and then I'll go ahead and start in the origin of species, just because I wanna keep rolling on this. I, I really wanna get this out to you guys. Bless you all.
and peace be upon you.